Welcome back to Learn MoGraph. A while back, I posted this animation to celebrate 50 subscribers on YouTube. And I got a bunch of questions asking how it was made. Today, I'm gonna to take you step-by-step step on how you can achieve this effect, as well as a few improvements I've made to the technique since then. Let's jump into After Effects and find out more. Here we are in After Effects, and we're gonna be using the same techniques that I used for that 50 subscriber animation to create this lava lamp effect that we have going on here. So let's open up a new composition and get started. We're going to go up to Composition, New Composition, and we're gonna call this Lava Lamp Tutorial. And we're gonna make this the same dimensions as 1080 by 1920, and I'll be posting this to social afterwards. And we're just going to bring in our Lava Lamp layers here from our composition that we already have. So we're gonna copy that and paste it, center it up within our composition, We'll scale it up till it's about the same size as the example that we have. And we're gonna go over to our motion tool over here and we're just gonna search for break. And we're gonna click our first option and run break. And that's gonna take our lava lamp layer and break it into shape layers that we can use right within After Effects. And we're just gonna go through and rename these. And really the layer that we want to keep accessible to us is this glass layer. So I'm gonna change the color of this label here just so we can keep track of a little bit easier. I'm gonna make it orange and we'll bring that up to the top. And the rest of these, I'm just going to pre-compose with Command Shift C on our keyboard. We're just gonna call it Lava Lamp Body. Now our first step is going to be creating the lava balls. So we're going to go to Composition, New Composition, and if you've noticed in a lot of my other tutorials, I prepend the composition name with PC and that delineates a pre-comp. And that's different than a main composition, which would just be our lava lamp tutorial. It makes it really easy when I'm looking in my project panel over here to see which ones are the pre-comps and which ones are the main compositions. So we'll call this P PC tutorial lava balls. We're going to create our first shape layer here using an ellipse. And if you hold shift and double click on your ellipse tool, it makes a perfect circle size to your composition. And we'll just scale this down a little bit in our ellipse path options. Maybe something like 175. We'll rename this. And I'm gonna make sure that I turn off the stroke. In our fill, we're gonna make that medium blue color. Now we are going to add a couple effects to the lava ball. So I'm using a plugin called Effects Console. And that allows you to, when you select a layer, press control space on your keyboard and you can search for effects without having to go to your effects and presets panel. So our first effect we're going to add is an echo. And we're gonna enter the following properties. So echo time, we're gonna leave it negative 0.033. Number of echoes, we're gonna to change to 14. Decay, we're going to change to 0.8 and our echo operator, we're going to change from add to maximum. So it keeps the same color that we have there. Next thing we're going to add is a fast box blur. We're gonna give it a blur radius of 13 and iterations of five to make it nice and smooth. And now we're going to press P on our keyboard to bring up position and we're going to add an expression to our position property. So we're gonna press Alter Option and click on the stopwatch and that opens up our ability to add expressions. And the expression we're going to add is a wiggle expression. And we do that by typing wiggle, parentheses, and inside our wiggle expression, we're going to be entering two parameters. The first is the frequency and the second is the distance that our position is going to wiggle. So we want this to wiggle 0.25 times per second. And we want, to, want it to wiggle about 250 pixels. And I always like to add a semicolon at the end of my expressions, um, just because it's good practice when writing JavaScript code or code in general to close out your statements. And we're gonna press enter on our keyboard. And now when we play this, we have our ball that slowly moves around uh, the radius of 250 pixels. Next, we're going to take our lava ball and we're going to duplicate it 12 times. So now we have 12 lava balls and we're just going to take some time and we're going to adjust the scale and adjust the position of these on to be on the top and bottom of the center of our composition. You'll see what I mean in a second when we come back to this. 
Now we have our lava balls. They're resized and repositioned in the general shape that we want that's going to fit within our lava lamp glass. Then I'm gonna drop down the resolution so we can play this a little bit easier to maybe something like a third. And if I play this, you can see that they're moving around with that gloopy lava ball sort of movement where some of them are coming together, some of them are coming apart, but they're all staying in the general center area of our composition here. And that's exactly what we want for this effect. We'll change our resolution back up to full and we'll go back to our main lava lamp composition here. And I'm gonna go up to our project panel by pressing Command or Control zero on my keyboard. And I'm going to drag the P PC tutorial lava balls into our main composition. And we're gonna put that underneath the glass layer. We're going to duplicate our glass layer and we're gonna call this glass. And I like to use the pipes and AM and that stands for alpha mat. So we're gonna use this layer as our glass track mat. We're going to hide our original glass layer for now. And we're going to pick whip our track mat from our lava balls to the glass. And now that keeps the balls contained right within our glass shape here. And we already have that sort of lava lamp effect going on here, but we're going to add a couple more effects to really bring some life into this. We're going to turn on our glass layer. We're going to zoom in here so we can kind of just frame up our glass in the center here. We're going to call our glass layer glass bump map. We're going to add a fill effect to our glass layer. We're going to change it from red to white. We're going to twirl down our shape options here. And we're going to copy our mask path by clicking this keyframe here. And that's going to create a keyframe and we're going to press command or control X on our keyboard. So that's going to remove the keyframe, but apply it to our pasteboard. Now we're going to go up to our pen tool here. We're going to make sure that our tool creates masks option is enabled. And we're just gonna click and add one point. And now we can press command or control V to paste our mask. So now on our bump map, we have a mask that follows the exact outline of our original shape. And we're gonna change this to subtract. And that masks out our shape, but this, this step is very important to get the right effect for the next thing we're going to add to our glass layer. So we're going to go down to our mask. We're gonna delete the first keyframe because we don't really need that anymore. We're going to make sure that this completely covers our original path here. That looks pretty good. We're gonna go down to our mask feather. We're gonna feather this by 20 pixels, and we're going to change the mask expansion to negative seven. So now we have some of the fill color leaking in from the sides, and that's going to be able to add this sort of bulging effect to the glass. Now we can hide our glass bump map for now. And we can go down to our PC tutorial lava balls, and we're going to add an effect called CC glass. We're gonna go up to surface and change our bump map to our glass bump map that we created earlier and change that from source to effects and masks. And this effect is really subtle, but you can see around the edges where we have our feathered in mask coming in, we have this nice bevel going on here. We're gonna change our property from lightness to alpha We're going to change our softness down to 5 and our height to 40 and our displacement to 6. And I think I can change our softness to be a little bit more soft, maybe something like 75. And you can see that it just adds this little bit of bulging that you would get on a rounded piece of glass like you'd see on a lava lamp. And I think that looks pretty good. We can also go into our lighting and we can change the intensity. We can change the height. Maybe have it come from a slightly different angle in the direction till we get the effect that we're looking for. I think that looks kind of nice. We have a nice light over on this side and a nice shadow over on this side. Now, if I turn this on and off, you can really see the difference that it makes. And I think I'm gonna add a black solid for the background just so we can see this a little bit better. 
Go back to our lava balls. I think that looks pretty good. Next thing we're going to do is take our bump map and we're going to duplicate it. And we're just gonna call this glass shine. I'm gonna turn on this layer. And we're just gonna press T on our keyboard and drop the opacity to something like 15. And that just adds a nice highlight to our glass along the edges, kind of giving it that translucent feel to it. We'll zoom out so we can see our entire lava lamp here. Next thing we're going to do to get that three-dimensional effect of the lava balls is going, we're going to duplicate our lava balls. We're gonna move it below the original. And we're gonna offset it by a couple frames going backwards. Now we're going to add a Lumetri effect, Lumetri color. Twirl down basic correction. We're going to desaturate to something like 51 and we're going to drop the exposure a little bit. So it's a little bit darker because it's in the background here. I think that looks pretty good. And right here is about where I stopped with the 50 subscriber animation. We have these kind of glowing fuzzy balls and they're just kind of moving in three dimensional space with a nice glass sheen going over them. Um, but we can add a couple more refinements if we want to create this into more of a realistic looking lava lamp. So we're going to go to our lava balls here. We're going to add another effect and this is going to be called Simple Choker. We're just gonna press this little box here to solo this layer, and we're gonna zoom in so we can really see what's going on. And we're gonna adjust our choke mat until we get the lava lamp effect that we're looking for. So if we bring, bring it up to something like 25, and we scrub through our timeline here, we can see that we get that liquid movement effect going on here. And as they get closer to each other, they sort of connect and move into each other. And that's the exact type of effect that we want. So we're gonna turn off our solo layer here so we can see everything. We're going to copy our simple choker and we're gonna put it on the lava ball layer in the background. And this one, we're not going to choke quite as much because we still want it to be sort of fuzzy because it is in the background. So this one, we're gonna turn down to something like 12. So it still has that sort of fuzzy out of focus look that you would get as if you were looking through thicker glass. And the last thing we're going to do to get that glowing effect is we're going to take our two lava balls, our bump map and our glass alpha mat, and we're going to pre-compose those. Press okay. We're gonna move that below the glass shine. So we bring some of that highlight back. We're going to duplicate this new composition. I'm gonna change the mode to add so we get some of the lightness coming through. We're going to track mat it to our original layer. And you'll see where we're going with this in a second. We're going to invert the track mat. We're gonna turn our original layer back on. And on our new layer that we changed to add, we're going to add a glow effect just the built-in After Effects glow. And we're gonna change the radius to something like 25. And we're going to duplicate our glow effect. And this one, we're gonna make something like 150. And we can duplicate it one more time and change this to something like 600. And now we can press T on our keyboard and drop our opacity of our glow layer to something like 50. And now we get this nice subtle glow that's going on from the lava balls that we have going on here. And that takes into effect the little bit of a darker glow that we have going in the background because in theory, there's light coming from the other side of our lava lamp as well. So this has been a not so quick tutorial on how to achieve the lava lamp effect that a lot of you saw in the 50 subscriber animation and you really liked. So I figured what better time than now as we're approaching 1400 subscribers, um, which we might actually reach by the time that this posts to go back in and show you all how I created that effect. Thanks for watching. And if you found any of this useful, please consider liking and subscribing. Or if there's any other tutorials that you'd like to see in the future, make sure you comment down below. 
and check out learnmograph.com for a lot of digital downloads and presets that you can get for absolutely free. And make sure you keep an eye out there because I have something really exciting coming later in the year for you.